Hey everyone, I'm Jarko Milosevic. I'm chief scientist, chief scientist at Informal Systems. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. It is a period of tyranny, unequal wealth distribution and power in the galaxy. A brave alliance of underground freedom fighters has challenged the tyranny and oppression of the awesome Amazonia Empire. Striking from a fortress hidden among the billion stars of the galaxy, rebel spaceships have won their first victory in a battle of tendermint with a powerful Imperial Starfleet. The Empire fears that another defeat could bring a thousand, some says even million, more solar systems into rebellion, and Imperial control over the galaxy would be lost forever. To crush the rebellion once and for all, the Empire is constructing a sinister new battle station, powerful enough to destroy an entire planet. Its completion spells certain doom for the champions of freedom. Success of Gaia inspired many. Tens if not hundreds new fortresses appears every day. Terra, Kava, Iris, Altia, Region, Agoric, Akash, Binance, Galactic and many others. The rebel aliens is a stateless interstellar coalition of revolutionary factions and anti-imperialist clandestine cell systems in a resistance movement against the imperialist Amazonian Empire. The alien's goal is to restore the Galactic Republic. When the Galactic Empire is capable of always fielding greater numbers and greater firepower, being able to hit high value targets and get out is much more important. The Alliance is considered as a group of resilient freedom fighters based on tolerance, self-empowerment and hope for a better future using insurgency weapons and tactics. Things were quite different in the Battle of Tendermint. There was one fortress, one team, one kind of battleship. We all knew each other, speaking the same language, working together, pilots, plant writers, fortress operators, working every day together on the field, fixing the issue together. Plans were handwritten at the time, in plain English, but everyone knew them by heart. Everyone was contributing to CORE and knew its strengths and weaknesses and how to use it properly. We all had the same goal, to make our fortress as robust as possible so we can win victory in a battle. We practiced fights a lot. Does anyone remember a game of stakes? It was adversarial, almost real fight. It was really like uh, a lot of fun, but also like a main amazing way to test the strength of our fortress at the time. At the time, halt for big stuff. When the infra of the fortress goes down, everyone was, it was a panic and everyone was trying to fix the issue. We were also doing a bunch of simulators. Simulators saved so many lives at the time. But now things are very different. Every fortress has different organization, different governance, different values. They use different kind of battleships. 
we have more people on the light side, but we don't know each other. We don't always understand each other. We have now people from different fortresses who are using different way to write plans. Pilots are operating different kinds of battleships. Fortresses are organizing their, their security very differently from each other. To be able to resolve a lot of these issues is in a preparation of Stargate battle, Jedi Summit was organized. It was decided that we need a standard way to communicate securely and exchange resources between fortresses. We need to use different battleships. It was a time when the interplanetary battleship crew, IBC, was born. IBC was designed around few main idea. It should operate under clear and precise rules. Security risks should be minimal because it's so critical to the operation of the whole aliens. Not everyone were super excited about the idea. Some were asking who would be willing to relay. It's a highly risky job. And it's not real, really what is the benefit. Incentive structure we should create, Master Yoda reply. This is something we haven't yet figured out completely. But it's a very important, it's a critical thing. It might require even another Jedi Summit just to address this issue. In this very complex world with many fortresses, which are now connected with IBC, we need to operate very differently. As every fortress has its own way of, or, or, of organizing its, its operations and processes, uh, this is not really sustainable. So now we need to centralize the IBC plans. There need to be a clear, clear process how we manage the plans how we make changes to it. This time, as the complexity and uh, the stake at risk is much, much higher than with Battle of Tendermint, we need, it's not sufficient just to have handwritten plans. They need to be computer verified. As we are using different battleships, we need battleship agnostic testing this time. So like any Battleship can be able to, to operate uh, in, as part of IBC. The security of the whole alliance depends on the security of the weakest link. And our enemy knows this. And if he, his, the plan of enemy is clearly to attack at the weakest link to keep us separated and then attack one fortress at a time. The only way for us to win this battle is to stay strongly compact and interconnected. To be sustainable, we need to build bridges to other galaxies. We need to ensure that we have the secure flow of information and resources from other galaxies especially during the, the fight period. We probably need to create bridges to all important galaxies. We have much more uh, members these days, but it is known that being productive member of the IBC crew is a very lengthy process. Onboarding takes a lot of time. It requires a lot of practicing to be able to be productive in, the, in this domain. We need all together to work hard to make this onboarding of new members much faster. It's a critical for our success to be able to win in this battle. 
we also need to be doing the cross-checking of plans. We want teams to be doing auditing of the, of the plans. So we are sure that we don't have the security holes. We recently did such uh, audit with an, also with other team and um, we were looking at the major battleship and the core IBC plan. And um, it was amazing exercise. We all learn a lot and uh, we can confirm that the plans and the core battleship are sound. There are no major security issues there. Of course, there is always there are always places for improvements, and uh, the the core team will be making some changes to the battleship and to planes to, to plans to make it even more robust. And this is this is a practice which we encourage everyone to do. Probably we should be looking at each other plans. And uh, there are a lot of benefits in people who are already operating fortresses and, and different kinds of battleships to look at what other people are doing. There is a lot of good ideas there. Also, one interesting thing is that we noticed that, that on the field, pilots have slightly different procedures, which are much more robust than the plan, which is great. This give us, uh, this means that they are more secure. But the question is what happens when the new members come? Will they be able just based on the plans to deliver the role, their role in the, in the IBC crew? We really need to ensure that the plans are, contains all important elements and they are very robust and secure. And that it is easy that everyone understand all important details so that there are no security issues on the field. As complexity of the IBC and also the, the stake at risk is really high, it is recommended to use formal methods. And we actually this time have formal specifications of all IBC plans. And we plan to take advantage on, on these, these uh, formal plans, which are computerly verified to improve onboarding to generate simulations so that new members can, can learn faster how to be productive in IBC. We also want to, uh, to ensure that with any battleship, you can have the secure IBC so that there are no, there are no uh, um, security holes on the field. Target battle is near. We should be ready for it. We should be practicing, ensuring that we are in a good shape, looking at each other plans, ensuring that the core, core battleships are sound, that the fortresses plans are, are robust enough, and that all bridges with the major galaxies are sound. Let the forest be with you. Okay, do we have some questions? <laughs> okay, we have a question. How important is formal verification versus standardized formal specs? So at, at the moment, what we know that already writing formal specs is very useful. 
because first it, it forces us in, in a mode where we need to be precise because computers are essentially yeah I see sunny question uh, so it already helps so it already forces us to be very precise so already already in a, in a process of of writing the spec we figure out we discover a lot of issues so that th there is already benefit on doing this and then uh, formal verification is just uh, giving us even more more confidence and um, also what we are what we are doing at informal we are trying to take a benefit of of the of the formal specs like we have TLA plus specs for IBC it's probably the most uh, most complex and complete the TLI TLA plus uh, spec out there and now we are we are trying to take uh, advantage on this because it's essentially a sort of truth it's like it's probably the most sound uh, definition of IBC and you can do of course you can do verification you can do model checking and check that invari invariants are sound but you can also generate uh, tests from it that's like what uh, Andre was talking with uh, with MBT and uh, we're also thinking for example of trying to use this TLI plus spec as onboarding tool like uh, you can generate uh, you can generate code which uh, people can play with you can generate diagrams so the so essentially the uh, we are we realize that TLA plus is a great tool for writing specs but it's not necessarily uh, the language everyone understand and so like engineers and users are are maybe more comfortable with with executable code, they can play with, they can do changes or or diagrams. So the um, so I think that both are important. Like, but even like having just standardized formal specs, I think it's already a great thing. So the um, formal ontologies as a valuable. Do you see leveraging formal ontologies as a valuable towards arriving at formal specs? Um, this is a good question. I'm not sure exactly what is meant here. I guess that the formal ontologies might be a way to to define uh, like domain more formally. If, if that's the way, like some people are having idea to try to. Uh, Okay, and still not sure what is exactly meant here by ontology, but like the, I think that okay, I will try to maybe come back to this after. Um, yeah, how we can make sure that implementations match agreed uh, agreed specs. So the, this is exactly the, the the key point. Like just having specs um, is is useful, but as the implementations are changing all the time, if we don't keep specs and implementation in sync, then it's not really clear uh, what is the what is the value of, of specs. And so we definitely need to have like uh, some way to to connect the two. And like right now, what we're doing with MBT is that we sort of we generate the execution, executable scenarios from specs, and then we run them uh, against the, the code. And uh, and we already you know, manage with, with this approach, which is relatively simple to catch interesting bugs and also to figure out if the code and specs are not aligned. And um, so th that's, that's a whole point. I think there are like, there are other ideas, like you can have, uh, you can have executable specs or you can have also you can try to have the execution scenarios from like the the real system or from the tests and then run them against the spec to see whether the, the spec invariant holds.
yeah also one very important thing is that uh, the essentially the, the formal specs of ibc should be accompanied by the implementation or language agnostic uh, tests and so essentially when you are if you're writing implementation of ibc in, in, a, in a different language then in addition to specs you will have a test which will be the language agnostic and you can check whether whether the implementation conforms with the specs so this is like uh, essentially these two should kind of go together and uh, so these TLI, tli plus specs will be soon merged uh with the with the canonical ibc specs right now which is in english and so like uh hopefully we'll, we'll try to to build upon this and uh, use it more and of course we won't have both uh but uh we, we are trying to to figure out really the best way how to to make the specs more approachable to everyone Cool. So if you guys have any last questions, uh, please drop in and ask a question. And we have a new one. Okay, so maybe I can just try to. So yeah, Sunny is saying that uh, we can create TLA. We start with English spec. Yeah, definitely. We always start with English spec and then we create, yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's why I like the as English is, is not precise enough. It's hard for English to be canonical. And that's why like we, we should look at the English spec probably as a as a like introductory material or like more descriptive descriptive thing. And then the TLA plus spec and the test should be more like considered a, a, as a kind of canonical spec. We are not yet there, but I think this is like uh, what ideally we want to do. Because like the uh, fully agree with Sunny. That the problem is that that if things are not like clear in English, and English is is not like uh, uh, let's say it's not the best way to 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 capture some some mathematical terms or protocols, uh, then it open leaves space for for ambiguity. Did TLA plus in production code have the same mistake in the under in the understanding the English spec? Yeah. We need to talk together. We need to speak the same language. That's exactly the point. But like the normally the with the TLA plus spec, one of the things we are right we are doing always is we try to capture the main invariants, and then um, this is something where like we shouldn't be making mistake. And then this gives us uh, like more more confidence. Then, then also like the protocols and implementations are sound. But there are a lot of, uh, I think as, as kind of more general comment that uh, we need as a community to work together to figure out what is the what is the proper way like what is our way like to to deliver systems we trust and uh, th this is not not you know like informal thing or any any like special team stuff it's like we need a, as a community to essentially yeah exactly like uh, with application developer we should work together and uh, uh, we we plan on informal side to essentially open the this let's say discussion and to talk with everyone and to understand um, the essentially what is the proper way like uh, how we should all work together on this understand each other and be able to at the end have have the code which is sound and, and uh, we trust it and also be able to to make progress without like stepping at each other's foot it's also a very important thing like just to balance everything Also, like just having this discussion with application developer, we understand better 
what they need and how they think. And then we can also, uh, so the tools like MBT or other tools can be better adapted to, to, uh, to address the, the developer concern. That's why it's like really critical that work together on this. I'm so hoping that next time Interchain Conversation 3 will be will be uh, in phase. <laughs> All right, so if we're done with questions, uh, we can either, we can transition to the next talk or we can uh, chill here and wait for more. Uh, it's up to you. I think we can move to the next talk. And just for, for, for Dan, uh, I'm not sure that, as I haven't uh, really answered questions, so like, uh, uh, then uh, please, please reach out to me on Jarquette Informal Systems and I would be happy to to uh, to chat or here I will also stay a bit after uh, just to understand what you meant by by uh, formalizing ontology. Okay, perfect. Uh, thanks okay, so much. Thanks very much.